so many, 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 many months ago, I showed you guys how to do the easiest spray painting ever. And I've also taught it multiple times over again in my beginner classes. It's just a moon. However, I have gotten asked a couple times recently, how do I get out of the space stuff? How do I get out of the space stuff and into the nature pretty, you know, nice looking stuff? That is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take the easiest spray painting ever and we're just gonna build off of it in some really simple ways. It is going to look like a simple painting. However, it's still pretty. And it's way, in my opinion, it's way more effective than diving headfirst into some complicated nature painting where you may or may not just wind up frustrated by the end of it. And for those of you who are confused about the materials, I will link a video down in the description below where I explained all of them and where to get them. Take your planet stencil and I recommend you put the moon somewhere in the middle. However, you can have it like kind of like off center a little bit if you want to. It's all completely up to you. I'm just gonna slap mine in the middle. Go ahead and outline it with some sort of dark paint. I recommend just black. All right, now we know exactly where we need to be putting this paint. So very complicated, stay with me. We're gonna take some white paint and you're gonna fill up the circle. Now you're gonna take some black paint and you're gonna fill up the circle. Okay, good enough. Now you're gonna need some plastic bags, some newspaper, some magazine, which is what I got here. And you just wanna make sure it has a bunch of wrinkles in it. So you just kind of, something like that. I want to make sure that this paint is still wet and you can make sure using the secret sauce, clear coat. So give that a quick coat. Take whatever tool you're using for this, place it down, swipe it, lift. Place it down, swipe it, lift. Now your texture might not look exactly like mine. In fact, it won't and that's perfectly okay. Okay, you just need something going on here. You need to shade and highlight. The shading and the highlighting is what turns it from a circle to a sphere, okay? And it is not that complicated, okay? So stay with me. All you're gonna need is some black and white. You're gonna need to know how to make smiley faces, which I believe in you. And you're gonna need to learn how to find your distance, which I will show you, okay? So if you hold your can too close to your canvas, you're gonna get a really way too solid line. So this is very simple. You pull it back a little bit and then you pull it back some more until you get a nice clouded, misty, faded sort of effect. That's it, okay? And the way that we're gonna do our shading, for this painting what we're gonna do is the shading and the highlighting on the sides. I don't care what side you pick, it don't, it don't matter, but we're gonna do it on the sides, okay? So let's flip this around, all right? And we're just gonna make a smiley face. We're gonna start from the outside of the circle and then just sort of work our way in. So remember, find your distance, smiley face, and we're just gonna slowly work our way in and then let's pull back. Okay, and I just pull back to make sure that it's, well, actually it didn't darken up right there, but you know, we kind of want to make sure it's darker towards here. That's why we pull back. Now, the highlighting is a little different, but we can do it. And it's still going to be a smiley face. However, we're not going to work in. We're going to let the overspray do most of the work. So we're just going to spray right outside of our circle, right outside of our texture with a smiley face. Let's get a new pan. That is a mess but just a smiley face along the outside. Let the overspray do most of the work. In fact, I think that is actually a lot, but that is it. That There's the shading and the highlighting. We have successfully turned it from a circle to a sphere. Now you should, if you want the best results, let this dry. I don't do that. So we're gonna place our planet stencil down like so. And at this point, you just need to fill it in. I don't care what colors you use. I think I'm just gonna go with black, maybe a little bit of gray. The only thing I will tell you is make sure you get around your stencil really nice. You want nice, clean, crisp lines. Also remember to not use too much paint, especially in colder weather, which is what most of us are experiencing right now. Okay, because colder weather, the paint will take longer to dry. So if you use too much, what's gonna happen when you lift this up, all that paint's just like kind of puddle in, pour in, and destroy all of those clean lines that we were just kind of praising. Now, if you're gonna add color, which I will add some gray, what I recommend again, just pull back your can. Okay, you could leave it completely black like this, it's fine, whatever, whatever whatever your little heart desires. Okay, but I like to add a little bit of something, something. So we're gonna pull back this can, and we're just gonna add little bursts. A little burst of gray in there. Blue is also a really nice color for stuff like this. Now if you feel that you did too much, you could just go back with the black, and it's the same thing, just pull it back and kind of eat away at that color. First, I'm gonna bring you guys down just a little bit down here. You're gonna spray some white onto your finger and you're gonna flick to the side first a bunch of times, get the big, nasty, disgusting blobs off. Also, do not flick your table like I just did because that's very painful. And then once you're done flicking to the side though, you're just gonna go ahead and bring it up here, right? So we spray some white on the finger, flick to the side first a few times, and then back onto the painting. And you don't really have to worry about the bottom too much. 
for this painting in particular, but we will worry about the top. And I like a lot of stars. That is basically it. That is the world's easiest spray painting. And that looks fine. Uh, our stencil, or yeah, our planet stencil left a little bit of a mark, which I will show you how to cover up if you want to. However, this is, this is it, okay? This is the easiest spray painting ever. I know, right? It was, it was pretty fast. See, our, our stencil kind of left a bit of, like, I guess, debris or something from my last painting. Uh, so here's how we're going to cover that up. Get some scrap poster, flat side like this, and all we're going to do is just hover, maybe like a centimeter above our painting. We always hover. Well, most of the time we hover. You just want to curve it. You see how we're curving it so it aligns with the curvature of the planet? That's perfect. You're going to take some white and you're going to spray it onto this tool like this, and it's going to go ahead and redirect a nice little line downwards. See, now we have a nice little glow over there, and it'll help cover up any of those little marks. Like I said, you don't have to do this, but it is a nice little thing to practice. Okay, now let us enter our first case of dabbling. I'm gonna take a straight edge and go at like the halfway point, right in the middle of this moon. I'm just gonna kind of place it down and just mark it with some white, just like that. Now I've made a video showing a few different ways on how to do water. So I will link it in the description if you wanna go check that out and use one of those techniques, great. However, I'm gonna show you a new technique, I think, that I didn't show in the other one. I'm not 100% sure, I might have showed it in the other one. It doesn't matter. You're gonna need some scrap poster again, once again with the flat side. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna make little swipes and then lift. So just like little swipes and then lift. And I will give you guys a different angle so we can kind of get our eyes better on it. First, you're gonna need secret sauce, okay? And you just wanna make sure that this paint is wet down here. It's very similar to another technique that I often use, except we're lifting it up. So all we're gonna do is put this flat side of this scrap down give it a little tap, a little swipe, and then lift it. See, we're just making little lines in here. Now I recommend little pressure, right? Very little pressure here, especially towards the back there, because we want those lines to be very minimal, right? They're the most distant ones. And I know I'm making this sound complicated, but it's really not, okay? You just tap with little pressure towards the back, and then as you get down towards uh, the bottom, put a little bit more oomph in your lines, okay? But we're just kind of swiping and lifting and working our way down. This is one of those techniques that I really very rarely use, but it's really effective if you want to keep like a reflection thing going on. Now let's learn how to do some land. There's a couple of ways that you could do this, and I will show you both ways. So one way that we can do it, and we'll, we'll do like distant sort of land back here to start us off. Scrap poster again, and I want you to just actually make a tear, like make some sort of land shape in there. Okay, so we could just say that's going to be some rocks. And I think we'll actually put it more towards the white part so we can actually see it up here. And if you wanna place it, just try to make sure that your paint is dry. If not, you can hover. We're just gonna spray black down, right? It's just a little stencil. That's all that it is. And now we have a rock that is like kinda in the distance over there. And we might've actually wanted to do that first, but we didn't. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda add some lines over there. Let's do another way. We're gonna take some black and you're gonna spray it off to the side. Take your fingers and stay with me. This is really complicated. Swipe it in the black, and then I want you to go ahead and finger paint in here. And we're also gonna do waterfalls here. So if we're gonna do waterfalls, we need to make sure that there's some sort of dip in the rocks here. So that's what we're doing. We're just kind of slanting these rocks down to make our dip, which can be right there. And then we're gonna elevate it everywhere else again. All right. And remember, nature is very random. So go ahead and make it a little jagged and weird and uneven and sharp and weird. And I'm growing bored of this, so I'm just gonna spray the rest in. I'm also leaving the bottom blank. We're gonna do more water down there. All right, now this is already pretty good. The swiping will already give you a lot of texture. However, if you wanna add more highlights to this, here's what you can do. Grab something sharp, I'm just gonna use my angle palette knife, and we're just gonna go ahead and scrape in some lines here. So anywhere that you think a highlight could be, and also think about your light source, okay? So the whole moon up here is our light source, which means that it's gonna be hitting the tops of our rocks. So that's what we're gonna be highlighting. We can kind of highlight up here. We're just scraping paint away. That's all that we're doing. And you just go ahead and, and, and just, just carve in some lines. Now, if you do a line, maybe you do a line and you say, I hate that, that's too much, that's too bright. What you can do, very easy, some secret sauce, just to re-wet that paint and then just smear it away. Just smear it away, no big deal, right? No big deal, but you just kind of smear it away and start over again. Now, another tip that I have for you is when you're doing this, just keep remembering, keep reminding yourself, nature is very random. So what I'm doing here is I'm varying pressure. 
because if you don't vary pressure, if you keep the same pressure the entire time, you get a very like even type line. It looks a little weird, but if I start with a lot of pressure, it's gonna look fatter, and then I can ease up to make it thinner, right? Some variety. Move on to the waterfall, okay? So it's very simple. We're just gonna need some scrap poster again, and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of crease it and then tear it, just like so. Now, if you want to use a flat side of some scrap, you absolutely can. However, I have found a love for that, like, kind of creased, straight, torn, I don't know what I'm saying, that, that, that torn side that we just made. Spray some white to the side. You're gonna dip your little tool into that white. And the best advice that I have for this, I'll get you guys out of the booster seat so we can get the best visual possible. This is so we're just gonna go to the top of this dip and the best advice I have is full send it. So we can go just straight down, which mine has a little bit of a, a weird bend to it, but that's completely fine. But slow and steady is gonna make it really shaky and you can go ahead and give it a little curve like I did right there. Right, and this is how we make our waterfalls. We just start and we drag it down. We start at the top, drag it down. Now let's go ahead and do our water. I'm just gonna slap a straight edge down here at the bottom of the rocks, and this is very simple. I'm just gonna take some white and spray right in the middle. Now normally, my white or my lightest color would go directly under a light source. However, we don't really have a single light source. It's just like this entire fucking moon up there. So we're, I'm just picking the middle. And then we're slowly gonna get darker. So let's just put gray right next to it and then black right next to that, because that's just, those are the colors we're using today. Want the secret sauce, re-wet this whole area down here. Take your hand, whatever fingers float your boat, doesn't matter. And I am just gonna swipe back and forth. I like to start from the top and we just work our way down. Just swipe back and forth, work your way down. And now we have some really simple water. For the splish splash, you can use a straight edge or you could just use, I'm gonna use my hand Right, and I'm just hovering above my painting. I'm blocking off uh, the little lake down here. That's all that that's all that my hand is doing. And I'm gonna spray some white starting on my hand and just flicking up, just flicking up a little bit. And this is a small waterfall, so you don't need to flick up that much, but just give it a little flick. And now we have our splish splash. Now for the corners down here, I'm gonna teach you guys another way to do land, which is the way that I usually like to do it. And I know it can be really Frustrating. Okay, so we're gonna just do it at the corners, make it as easy as possible. First, we're gonna go ahead and lighten it up. And I'm only lightening it up here because this is a black and white painting and we, we have to like separate everything. So we're gonna put a little separator of white down there. Just swiping, swiping some white in there. I'm gonna take some black and I'm just gonna freehand this one. You can finger paint it in if you want to. And I'm just gonna go ahead and swipe in some rocks. And we can make it flat or we can give it a little bump, little, little thingy. I don't, I don't know what that is, that's called. I'm gonna go ahead and make some, just put some black in there in the corners. Take some magazine. You can use newspaper as well if you want to. And what I like to do, I'll just fold it in half to give it a little bit more strength. But I'm gonna take my right hand, my dominant hand, and grip the bottom of this page here. And then take my other hand, and I'm gonna fold the top of the magazine over my fingers like this. That's it. And I'm going to use the fingers of my dominant hand to guide this page along my painting. That's it. And make sure you're using the secret sauce here, okay? You're gonna to need to make sure this paint is wet just like so. Remember, grip the bottom, fold it over the top, and I'm just using my fingers to kind of guide this page along and maneuver it. And we can go ahead and we get some pretty cool texture there. You can go in with something sharp, add little highlights in there, which I absolutely will do. I love doing that. Goes a long way. That is a technique that I believe you guys should practice, especially if you're gonna keep following and doing like my paintings and my tutorials, because I, I use that a lot. All right, and then finally, we're not gonna do pine trees, because I know pine trees are like a lot of our worst nightmares, okay? We're just gonna dabble with the sponge a little bit though, still. So once again, we need a separator. We're just gonna put a little bit more mist of white. Take some synthetic sponge. I was just using this, but it, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna spray some black to the side. Soak that sponge up in that black. And this is very simple. We're just gonna tap. Okay, just tap around and make different sorts of plants. So you can kind of make it some sharper plants where we're just tapping up and down. So we're just tapping up and down real quick to kind of give us those sharper plants. We can also do it side to side, right? We could just kind of tap side to side real quick to make some bushes and some plants, or whatever the hell it is. We can also swipe with the, with the synthetic sponge as well. All right, I usually use this one for like tropical uh, sort of paintings, but you can use it wherever. Right, so we could just kind of, whoops, swipe that in, in each direction. They almost come off as like palm leaves, you know?
And also, let's go ahead and highlight these real quick. And I know highlighting, uh, for some reason, scares people. It's not that hard, okay? So let's go ahead and take some white. Or whatever color you're using. You can also use, like, green. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the same side of the sponge here. Dip that in the white. Right, just to kind of dull it down a little. And we're going to tap. Just tap in the same exact way that you just did. The key here is you want to leave a lot of black space. That's it. Doesn't matter what color you're using, you just want to leave some black space. You're not trying to overtake the black. You just want to add to it. That's what highlights are. You're just adding. Now, if you accidentally do too much, and I'm, I'm tapping very lightly. So lightly and in less spots. If you accidentally do too much, so let's say we did way too much right here, and it's all disgusting, gross. Easy fix. Black. Sponge. Redo it. Okay. And finally, here's another one that we can practice and throw in here. You can use a paintbrush, you can use a marker, you can use whatever the hell that you want. However, I like to use the fountain pen, which the fountain pen is, once again, just some scrap that has a flat side to it. We're going to go ahead and fold it in half, give it a nice crease. I'm just going to use black here, spray it right into that crease. Now, when you tilt this down, the paint starts to pour out, and you can go ahead and, and just draw stuff out with it. And what we're going to draw are wonky V's. Wonky V's, that's all that we're going to do here. So we start with the center of the bird, and you're just going to arch your wing out. And you can make it wavy, you can make it straight like this, you can make it straight up. And then you go back to the center, and you just make a wing the other way. Easy, right? So we can go ahead and make a wavy type one right there. And then if you want to do anything after that, what I like to do is go back to the center of that bird and just pull down some of that black paint just to give it a body. I'm not, uh, I'm not really tilting it down to add more paint, just pulling down the paint that's already there. Secret sauce, and give it one final even coat. Oh, that's not the year anymore, is it? You fucker. God. I'm just gonna put another layer to try to cover that up. Twenty twenty four squiggle. Okay, and one thing that I want us to remember, because I know that might have seemed like a lot, you do not have to do every single one of those techniques. I wanted to show you a lot of those techniques because they're very common in nature paintings. But if you want to do just water, then just do a lake underneath uh, underneath your uh, moon. If you want to do just a waterfall, then just do a little thing of rocks with a waterfall. Just do whatever you want to practice. If you have any questions, let me know.